This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. kind of worked out because I was trying to pass off one of your Christmas gifts <laughs> as a anniversary gift. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you got me some sweet stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, here's your card. And co-host Marnie Winfield. Some of the things that attracted me to you was... I saw that you were determined and had your own goals and aspirations. And we've never tried to steer each other away from anything that we've ever wanted to do individually. It is the 10th of December, 2022. My name is Corey Winfield. My name is Marnie Winfield. And this is the 217 Recovery Podcast. A little special intro there because, well... This is the last podcast we're going to do before it's our two-year anniversary. Oh, my gosh. So I went back to our one-year anniversary, and it was from that show that I took that from. So That's good stuff. Yeah, this year, I don't know. The second year is just like we've already done it, you know? Uh-huh. So it's just, here you go. Should we talk about what we did with our cards? Yeah. Okay, this is something that I think that we're adulting. It's a trick of the trade. Yeah, welcome to the Recovery Podcast, everybody. This is what we teach. <laughs> <laughs> These are these are moments we have in life, you know. We're in recovery, and we're at the the store, and we, we had an event that we had to do, and then we went to the store afterward. And I said to you, joking but not, "Hey, maybe we should get our anniversary cards tonight." And you were like, "Oh my gosh, I was thinking that." Well, you, what'd you say? I said I was thinking the exact same thing, but I was going to distract you and go back to the aisle and get it because I was like, I don't want to see him picking out his card. That's kind of cheesy. But I was like, you know what? Let's just let's just do that. Yeah. And then it's I'm first of all, I'm not a big fan of cards. He's not. I just don't see a point in them. You throw them away later, and they and they end up in some box that you throw away later. I mean, maybe, you know, I'm okay. There's one for my grandma that I have that I'm like, okay, I'm glad I kept that one. But if I kept every single card that people would give me, that would be just silly. Mm-hmm. And so I just I don't believe in cards. I'm just not a big fan. So and some of them are expensive. Yeah. That one I was about to buy you was real expensive. It was like eight bucks. Yeah. For a card. So we get up to the register and we're going to go through and I'm like, how about we just read them and then we just put them back and save 10 bucks. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, as as ridiculous as that sounds, he might be on something here. It sounds like, you know, they're just cards. Uh-huh. We kept our first year anniversary ones. We did. So kids and grandkids can throw that away one day. <laughs> but you know, I, like, I don't know. Well, the thing is too is, I mean, sometimes that they choose beautiful words, mm-hmm. right? That mm-hmm. kind of like relay your feelings, right? Somebody somewhere sitting in some think tank office, and it's like, I'm gonna, you know, come up with some beautiful stuff that's gonna melt some hearts, and it's all good stuff, right? But at the same time, I mean. If we can reflect how we're feeling on our own, you know, then who needs cards? Yeah. We tell each other this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. And we know it. So it's, like, I don't know. Yeah. So it saved us 10 bucks. And yeah. I'm glad. You still kind of look like you're having some reservations about it. Like, oh, I don't get to open a card. Well, no. No, it wasn't that. It was kind of like a symbolic thing, like something to open because <laughs> we're not doing <laughs> gifts. No, I got a gift for you. Uh, so yeah, yeah. anyhow, there so, was a whole like, mm. you know, presenting something to open. So, mm. but that's okay. I get it. And yeah, made sense. So we, we kind of had our moment, our moments, our, our hallmark, hallmark moments. Yeah. Right there in aisle 12, Meyer grocery <laughs> store, two days prior. Yeah. We're well, like, Aw. daddy's not bringing home the bacon right now either. So it's, <laughs> you know, like $10, $10. Yeah. So that's what we did. Yeah. So it can be done, you know. And like I said, we, we do tell each other these kind of stuff, this kind of stuff all the time. So really. Yeah. Not to be cheesy, but I'm just saying. Right. But so, d- make sure don't don't take this and wrong with it because it might not be for everybody. Yeah. Kind of needs to be a group decision. <laughs> Maybe I mean, if you guys are shopping together and like, hey, I have a really good idea. Let's pick out the most perfect card for one another and then share them mm-hmm. in a nice corner of, I don't know, the pet aisle <laughs> or, who you know, whatever's most <laughs> relatable to you in your relationship. And we can save 10 bucks. We can get that really good frozen pizza. There you go. <laughs> you know. 
whatever. You gotta pick and choose your battles sometimes. Hey, but if you just got so much money you don't have to do with it, to just buy whatever. Yeah, Buy right. some cards. Go for it. Yeah. But but don't let us get in your way. If you're like, wow, Christmas is coming and damn, <laughs> <laughs> we don't got that COVID money no more. Like, what are we supposed to do? Right. Yeah. Then you got to cut corners how you got to cut corners. So it's not like we were, you know, open up chips in the chip aisle and leaving the bag. It was just their words. And it was already, I mean, mm. the cards are open, right? For you to yeah. browse. We just chose to browse together. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Being smart. Yeah. So pass that on to Governor Whitmer. <laughs> <laughs> no but we had an event tonight we had to go to it was really cool it was addiction treatment services they put it on the porch mm-hmm. is like their community center and it was really cool it was a talent show and i was approached i don't know a couple months ago by adam a good friend adam newth and he was like hey will you do some comedy at the talent show and i was like what like stand-up comedy and he's like yeah and i was like yeah hold on if this because i've been talking about doing this stand-up comedy thing for a while and i was like if this girl hannah who went with us to lansing for the U fam rally she said that she was comedian i thought well if she goes on then i'll do it too mm-hmm. and he said okay so he reached out to her and she said she would do it and i was like all right well i'll do it too figure i'll get some pointers from somebody who's a comedian Cause I'm not a comedian. And then she backed out last minute. And I think it was like on Wednesday is when I found out. I'm like, what? I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And at first I thought, well, but I'm not going to do it. But I was like, well, I already committed to it. I have to do something. That's right. It's what you say. And then it dawned on me that a friend, Jacob Sparks, he, he did the most recent spotlight video. Mm hmm. And I met him when he was in treatment and he's doing great. He's got two and a half years clean Mm -hmm. and he started doing rapping and stuff and he did pretty good tonight, but he came out because I I said it to him and then he like, was like, Hey, I'll be there. I'll see you there. And I was like, cool. You're going to perform. He's like, yeah. And I sent it to Adam brothers from the stone soup podcast, but he didn't, I don't think he was, I don't know. And he does music. Yeah. I don't know if he was busy or what, but Jacob last minute, I was like, all right. He I'm, killed it. I'm going to do it. He, he did, did two great. songs. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was going to mention to him when we were outside because he was, he came to me and he's like, man, I'm so nervous. You know, my legs shake in. And he's like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, look, man, just it, it would it would be crazy if you weren't nervous. Yeah. You know, I was like, you're going to be a little nervous. And I remember I used to get really nervous before I would talk in front of people. Sometimes I kind of do, but not like I did back in the day, man. Mm-hmm. When I was like 18 or whatever like that, I was like freaking nervous probably as nervous as he was Mm -hmm. and i was thinking that i should have told him don't worry if you mess up because you're the only one that knows that you messed up Mm -hmm. you know someone said that to me a long time ago i heard it somewhere and i was like oh yeah they're right you know like just keep going because nobody Mm -hmm. nobody knows you messed up yeah and he messed up a couple times but it's understandable this is first time ever doing anything live in front of a crowd or anything like that like this stuff and he 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 killed it in my opinion and just to have the balls to go out there and do it and i mean to original songs that he that he wrote yeah about and recovery to, to like remember all the lyrics oh my god i have no like hands down amazing uh, like I, I don't even know i don't i don't know and for him to pull it together like that like last minute kind of mm-hmm. in that in itself is amazing so i think he did a great great job yeah he did I was proud of him. I told and him that. Like, if you actually, I mean, you could make out majority of the lyrics. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know how some rap songs were like, wait, what? Did, I don't even have no idea what that person just said. Mm-hmm. But you could you could keep up with the lyrics of it, and they were all just so super meaningful that that's what made it 10,000 times cooler. Yeah. And the audience that he was, you know, that he was performing in front of, just, I mean, heart-melting amazingness yeah they had his back for sure and and what is what a great place to do his first you know concert kind of you know to perform his songs live i mm-hmm. mean what a perfect group of people you know recovery community you know and places that place that he holds dear to his heart because it was where he went the last time he went to treatment yeah and the the main players like the 
staff, a lot of the staff of the treatment center when he was in the treatment center and wrote that song, the first song that he um, performed, he wrote it while he was there, Mm -hmm. like in the 28 days or whatever he was in treatment and performed it while he was there. And so for them to hear that again and see him two some years later, you know, still sober, like that's the kind of stuff that makes us love our jobs. It's those moments you know, we know that people, you know, this disease is a freaking animal. And so, you know, we get it that people, you know, don't always make it. And to have the those ones that do show back up, it's just, there's no words. Just, yeah. yeah. Like, that's that's when you know, like, that's, that's why we do what we do. You know, yeah. I see people like him. I see people like Adam Stevens and, you know, people that, are, that have made it are making it, you know, and, and people that I've, that I've seen struggle, you know, I've seen Adam struggle a lot more than I've seen Jacob struggle, but it, it feels good to mm-hmm. see these guys. And, and Jacob, I remember when he was in treatment, he was showing me those songs that he was writing and I kept telling him, man, like, go for it. I introduced him to NF. He had never heard of NF. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, listen to this NF guy. Like he's things about positive stuff. And, and he was like, man, I just really caught on and I love that guy, you know, and mm-hmm. I want to do something like that. And people like would laugh. Oh, do you think you're going to be, man? Jacob didn't care. You know, he put that stuff to the side and he was going to go after what he wants to do. And and I told him while he was in there, man, people people laughed at me when I was like, I'm going to start a podcast. They're like, okay. but you just do it, you know, and then look who's laughing at the end. Yeah. You know, and people are going to talk smack. People are going to hate on your dreams because they don't understand your dreams. And to have that positive influence in your life, those goals that you chase after is what keeps you sober. Mm-hmm. So power, more power to them, and I'm so proud of them. Yeah, Jacob Sparks. You can find him on YouTube. Yeah. I think it's at Jacob Sparks. If you go to YouTube, you can find him that way. But and just across the board, the talent of the people mm-hmm. that performed tonight was just amazing. Yeah, the woman that got up there at the end, I don't think she was thinking. I think she may have got talked into it at the end, last minute. But she did good. And, you know, to just to have the courage to go up there and saying. No, I can. So I uh, this this individual, she her name's Asia and she. No, it's fine. She'll be cool. I'll double check it before you edit it. I'll text her. <laughs> but um, and I had sent out a th- a reminder that this event was going on this evening, this morning at like nine thirty or ten o'clock or something. She had no clue what was happening. Like huh. she had no idea that it was even going on. And she's like, "That's so awesome! Is there still put spots open?" And I was like, "That's not my, you know, it's, I don't know. You're gonna have to get a hold of, you know, the person on the." And I said, "Adam and Rob, the organizers, I can't say." And sure as shit, she shows up and she's like, "Kills it." Right, <laughs> walks away with first place. <laughs> I'm like, girl, I didn't know you had pipes on you like that. Yeah, and she was super nervous too, and just to see him overcome that, you know, like to push through. To, you know, I know they're all feeling good about it. Mm-hmm. Nobody there sucked. Yeah, you know, it's like they look back at the night and they're just like, hell yeah! And it'd have been so easy for them to to cower out and say no, can't do it, or make some excuse up, you know. But yeah. More power to him, man. Yeah. And she's really she's really working hard on on her recovery, you know. And she's young and it's inspirational and people that are so young are taking this seriously, you know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of individuals that I mean, you asked me if I was 20, 21, 22 years old, get sober, I would laugh in your face. Like that wasn't even on my like radar to even listen to words coming out of your mouth. Right. You know, so it's just, it's amazing. And, you know, she's an inspiration to a lot of people. Yeah. She's hopefully keep going and keep getting better and, you know, keep pushing herself in those uncomfortable areas, those uncomfortable situations. And, mm-hmm. and that's how you start building some, I don't want to call it cred, but you start, you build something, you build something in yourself. Yeah. I'm not sure the word of self esteem or I don't know what it is, but, you realize you can start doing those things that you never thought possible. Yeah. And I think even just presenting yourself in the recovery community, um, in that moment, doing what you're doing and believing in yourself, 
it establishes, like you said, it's some kind of, it's some, some kind of, I don't know, like planting the seed, like they say, mm-hmm. of recovery, you know, that you can do it, like you're capable of it. And so down the road, if something happens and shit falls apart, you can, you know how you felt at that moment and you know it's something that you can get back to. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. important. So good job, yeah. BTS. And all the and all the people that showed up, you know, like you could just see everybody was having a good time. Everyone was enjoying themselves, you know, and you can have fun in recovery. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I <laughs> I they were kept saying I was a comedian and I was like, I'm okay. And you're like you gonna do comedy tonight? And you're like, I'm gonna go up there and say some stuff. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> I was know. like, what are you? And then every, I can't. Probably five or six people were like, "Did Corey practice a show with you?" I was like, "He not have a show." <laughs> <laughs> and if he did, he would just probably deviate it from it anyway. So it's probably pointless for him to come up with what he is gonna say because he would end up saying something different. Yeah, I think it would be better at it if I could, but I don't know, like. Maybe some, I don't know, but I mean, you did great. I spent it more was funny. I'm thinking about this because it was a PG show, so that really threw me off. Yeah. Cause I'm a big fan of the F bomb and it just really just were and saying really inappropriate things to get people to go, whoa. Yeah. You're, you like that. the, like the kind of like shock factor of yeah, it all. Like, did he just say that? Oh my God. That's funny though. That's, that's why I kind of go for it. And so, like, <laughs> Yeah, it was different because I had to not do that. So I know I just kept thinking about, well, I can't tell this story. I can't tell that story. I can't tell this. Can't tell that. And then I was like, man, I'm thinking about this way too much. And I was like, I just need to stop. And I just need to go up there and just be in the moment. Mm-hmm. And I kind of did, you know, like the guy was like, you got an intro song? And I was like, an intro song? I was like, do I, what do you got? And then he like stopped the music. I don't know if you guys even heard or knew what he was doing. But then he started playing like some guitar solo. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't I don't need any music. He's like, what about Hell's Bells? And I was like, sure, that'd be great. And then it occurred to me like that was the song that we were at the Lions game. Every every third down, they'd play that. Down, mm-hmm. down. They'd be like, third down. Mm-hmm. So I kind of started with that. But yeah, I don't know. And then I just kind of went from there. But it was fun. You know, I like talking in front of people. Yes, um, you do. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> but it was challenging. I had a kid in the front row. Two like, kids. Two in the kids front. in the front row, like kid kids, you know, like, and I'm just like, oh. Yeah, they were what are they like? I'd say four, maybe five, four, five. Six. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. <laughs> tough crowd. But it was it was fun and you know, I could have backed out. My back hurt in the last two days it's been laying in bed. Yeah, I was like wondering. This morning, I'm thinking, like, I'm afraid to wake him up and ask how he's feeling because he's going to have to pull himself together to get to this thing tonight. <laughs> I don't know how to break it to him, but I'll wheel you in there, honey. Well, it comes down to that. I was going. I was just like, I need to get my back better because my back, this Thursday, I was walking through the house and I'm like, oh, no. And anybody with back problems, you know that feeling that yeah. and you're, you, know, you could just be reaching for a pin, whatever. I, I've thrown it out, wiping my butt, like. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing it's not like hey go lift that 200 pound sack or whatever okay yeah. no that's fine yeah. oh g- grab me a napkin uh, 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 oh my god my back yeah and i had one of those moments and i'm like oh no and it was like in the middle of my back and normally it's to the right the one that goes down my leg the sciatica one so this was kind of a different one i've had it like once maybe twice before but i just was like man i gotta get better yeah and i was like i'll just rest and I did. So, yeah, I'm glad I could get up and pull it together and and do it. But, yeah, when you commit to something, you got to do it. Definitely a successful event, though. Yeah, I'm just glad that we were a part of it and that we were asked to be there. At least I was. Yeah. I mean, you had to. What are you going to do next time? I don't know. My mom asked me that. Ha <laughs> She's like, why weren't you in the talent show? I'm like, Mom, what would you want me to do? Like, I don't know. Yeah, lots of talents. What would you do? I don't know. Tell jokes. Bake a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Bake a pie. You could tell jokes. Like, you were thinking about it probably just as much as I was. Oh, I, th- I think a bunch of funny stuff all the time. You're like, you should say that and this. And you were like, want me to talk about the sperm bank or something. Oh, because I was talking about how people complain about how they can't pee in front of other people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like all this fertility stuff we're going through, and this is just being completely transparent, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you think you guys got it hard with, you know, stage fright? You got to pee in front of somebody. Imagine if you had to give somebody a semen analysis. Mm-hmm. I don't feel bad for you. Yeah. I thought about stealing that joke from you, but then I realized I couldn't pull it off either. <laughs> yeah, I go to the doctor and they're like, here's a cup, you know, and there's a bathroom. And I'm like, we're in there just working up a sweat. And I'm just like, this is not happening. Like, I can't <laughs> do this here. Like, this isn't, I'm in a bathroom and I hear people out in the hallway. Somebody tried, tried coming in the bathroom and ah, ah, I just can't. Sorry. Here's your little <laughs> cup back. We'll try again next time. I know you were so mad at me that day. But I was like, I was, there's nothing I can do that was not happening in that bathroom. I don't know how anybody does that. Here, go twist one off in the bathroom. Okay. That'd be weird if you come back and it's full. I'd be like, what are you doing? What kind of person are you? I have no idea. <laughs> That's, it was too much for me. So I was like, yeah, that joke wouldn't even work because I couldn't perform either. So yeah, it was tough. That's for sure. But it is Saturday and tonight on the intimacy game. Mm. It's Saturday night and that means one thing. We're both going to answer questions honestly. It's time for the intimacy game. Corey and Martin. Mm. Draw a question from the box and we're going to answer it honestly Here on the Intimacy Game It's time for the Intimacy Game Voted best intro (laughs) in the world It sounds like something that'd be on like Saturday Night Live Like a skit (laughs) I don't know well, I was voted most likely to be on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Back in high school. I believe that. All right. So I'm going to ask my question first. Okay, joke. All right. What love song best describes our relationship? So that would be our wedding song by Brian Adams. I'll always be right there. No, that's the song you walked down to. That's our wedding song. I know it's our wedding song, but it's really beautiful. That was a question. I know. That, okay. I didn't know what, what makes our wedding song our wedding song. Is it the end song? Is it the song you walked down to? Is it just any song that was played at our wedding? Well, we only had like four songs played at our wedding because it was that song. And then, well, we had a playlist before hmm. that we'd put together. But I don't know. The lyrics were really super meaningful, and I thought they were beautiful. So whenever I hear that. Okay. I'm going to have to say which love song best describes our relationship. I'm going to have to say I Forget Where We Were by Ben Howard. I think it's a love song. <laughs> but, he, but he talks about, you know, like I forget where I was. You know. Mm-hmm. Get where we were anymore. Oh, hey. I wasn't laughing. I was, uh, but I don't know. But I, I think it is. So that's my answer. Okay. There's, lo- there's lots There's lots of songs that have are like the lyrics of them. Especially there's certain parts of them where I'm like, this is exactly, exactly like us. Because there's so many moments in our relationship where I could say, well, that was the moment. Mm-hmm. That's the moment I fell in love with you right there. And then when I think I'm totally in love with you and then I get more in love with you because of a trip we take to Mackinac Island or mm-hmm. just the thought of me thinking about us going back to Mackinac Island and just being there with you, you know, I like I fall like a little bit more in love with you. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of, I, I, could, I, I couldn't really tell you at the moment because there's a, like a million of them. Yeah. So, okay. What's your card say? Um, okay, so this is a yellow card, which is not mean. Anyway, it's a yellow card, so don't get, don't get, be X-rated. Okay. Okay. (laughs) What's one thing you want to do together that we've never done before? Buy a house. 
Good answer. Thanks. That's a good answer. <laughs> very, very yellow card answer. Thanks. I guess. No. Um. So, one thing that I want to do is, and we've talked about it, but we haven't really settled on the details of it. Is I want to go on a cruise. Yeah. It's just the destination point. And there's, I know cruises have multiple destinations, but you can get them, you know, Alaskan cruises. And majority of them are like tropical, except for there's some that are like frozen. I know. Well, I'm, I, I really think the the Mediterranean cruise yeah, the looks one amazing. Rome. Yeah. It's just mega expensive. I know. Like ridiculous expensive. But that's on my kind of like our marriage bucket list. Yeah. One day. One day. One day. Would you rather go on a cruise or buy a house? I mean, that's like a totally not even fair question because <laughs> obviously I, I would. I mean, if I had like that, uh, I would want a house. Okay. Yeah. Because then we talk about we can always go on a cruise like when our kids yeah. are old. Yeah. Because just because we can't have kids don't mean, oh, we're never going to be able to do that the rest of our lives. Right. Yeah, we'll have 20 years to save up for it. <laughs> you know? People with kids are like, oh, yeah, good luck with that. Right. Kids cost so much money. Good luck saving money. Right. Nah, we're not, we're not buying birthday cards. <laughs> we're, start, we're starting now already. Yeah. We're ten ten dollars into the savings for yeah. our Mediterranean our, cruise. Our kid won't know Think what a birthday card way. is. <laughs> e cards. <laughs> what does grandma I always texted you? Put money in that one thing. I don't know. She just hand it to me. I know. I know. We'll talk to her about that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like just, just, mom, stop with the cards. Just give them, just give them the money. No, we don't do cards. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, mm. yeah, we got time to plan that all out. Yes, we do. So that's interesting. Thanks for playing the intimacy game with us. Ask your spouse or loved one those questions, or go by the intimacy game again. I got that for my anniversary last year. Mm-hmm. It's really working out for us. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. You know, a little blind question. Yep. It doesn't have to be sexual. I know you tried to make it sexual. No, I don't. You, you did. <laughs> I wanted to mirror you from trying to do that because you would have been like, said something, no matter what you would have, if I wouldn't have started with that. Uh, I don't think so, honey. No? no. Okay. Okay. Our anniversary is coming up. It's very exciting. I have my four-year anniversary coming up on Wednesday, mm-hmm. so we'll do a podcast before then. I wonder if I should run down like top ten, bottom ten moments. Well, maybe five, or just top five moments. Top five, top uh-huh. five's good. All right, and I'll do top five moments, and then top five things that I think I've learned. I like it. I could probably do a top hundred, but we'll just do top five. Yeah. All right, so we'll do that Tuesday. That sounds fun. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, do you have anything else? No, I just um, want everybody to have a wonderful, safe, sober weekend. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Hear from you. You'll hear from us. Yeah, we're going to talk at you. We'll talk at you on Tuesday. All right, thanks. And don't forget about our app, 217 Recovery app. It's in the App Store again. It's in the Google Play Store. Get it. It's free. You can listen to all of our episodes. Go back to episode one. Before I even knew Marnie. And somebody was asking me about that. They they asked if uh, if I talked to you or if I talked about us and our relationship leading up and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. I was like, it's all in there. Kind of. It is. Well, first I had to keep you hidden. But then, no. But then, yeah, as our love blossoms and we talk about wedding and all that stuff. And That's I'm, true. That's true. Yeah, you know, So it would be kind of interesting to go back and listen to yeah, it. Yeah, we've but, shared a lot of – we've been – We've disclosed a lot of stuff. Yeah. So way. go have a listen and you got tons of episodes to choose from. <laughs> but you can go back, pick a year, and you know, if there's anything else you need, let us know. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. Win a bunch of free shit from 217 Recovery. Go to the app or the website, 217recovery.com.